Welcome to Greenville County Soil and Water's Square Foot Gardening Webinar. We're happy you're here. We'll be giving you a lot of information. We'll hold a question and answer at the end of the presentation. So go ahead and hold your questions until the end. All questions should be submitted through the link at the bottom of your window. Um, don't worry, we'll stay on until the end to get everyone's question answered. Also, you'll be receiving a copy of the webinar as a follow-up. Uh, in the next few days. So we'll include the relevant links in that email as well. Don't worry about writing things down today. Additionally, if you are watching this webinar uh, after we've already held it, you will not hear the questions and answers. It will only be the information, but you'll still have access to our resources page. All right, let's get started. First of all, you should know about us, the Soil and Water staff um, I'm Lynn Pileski. I will be your presenter today. We also have Shelby Cohen and Kirsten Robertson joining us. Shelby and I are the education staff for the district and Kirsten is our district manager. I run our square foot gardening blog. It's available at howwillmygardengrow.com and Shelby's the mastermind behind the seed library and Kirsten's our engineer. She's a farmer and she's our fearless leader. Uh, Kirsten and Shelby will be answering questions with me at the end of the presentation. So, that, that's who we are and that's what we do. So first question, how many crops can you grow in a four foot by eight foot raised bed? One crop, two, four, maybe six different vegetables in rows like that. More like 32, thank you square foot garden. It's an amazing system and you're gonna learn all about that today. So here is information. Here's a picture of the square foot garden in action. And this is actually out of my garden uh, several years ago, I will say. Um, so let me tell you a bit about me. I come from a long line of really fantastic gardeners. My, my mom and my papa, they could grow anything. Me, on the other hand, this plant looks like the usual results. I had a black thumb. I could not grow anything. But this is my garden. It's full of greens, and this is the very first year of, of gardening. And so then you have to ask yourself, what happened? Did I hire a gardener? No, I used the square foot gardening method. So what is square foot gardening? At its most basic, it's a method to produce a large amount of produce from a relatively small area. And what, what that means is that this is perfect for backyard garden plots. Everybody knows uh, here in the upstate of South Carolina that trying to dig into our clay soil is really a problem. It's, it's difficult and it's, a, it's just tough. So because the square foot gardening method is done in raised beds, the clay soil is not a problem at all. All you need is your bed, a little trowel, scissors, and your fingers. That's it. So again, why square foot gardening? Square foot gardening takes up minimal space, and that's compared, of course, to traditional row gardening where you might have feet and feet and feet of vegetables growing. A lot less time and effort, less water, you'll have fewer weeds, rotating crops is easily, and the yield will be five times the crops potentially in one fifth of the space. So it's amazing. Just for example, in the first year that I gardened with the square foot gardening method, um, I grew all of these different crops in the summer season. Um, and I will say I have two four foot by four foot raised beds. So I was able to grow 28 different crops in one season in those little two four foot by four foot beds. And so the square foot gardening method uh, was created by Mel Bartholomew. He is an engineer by trade and he took up gardening as a hobby, but he then set out to kind of solve the frustrations that most gardeners have, right? It's this whole row gardening method, and he wanted to replace that with a better way to garden, something that's more efficient, manageable, and less work. And so he invented the square foot gardening system. So the crux of it is that there are seven easy steps, and you'll like the seventh one. 
So the first one is to select a location. And I will say that I'm going to go through all the details of these steps as we move along. So this is just an overview. So you select your location, then you build your box, you fill it with the compost mix, you plan your garden, you plant your garden according to what you've planned, you weed and water it, and then you harvest and eat. And that's the really great step in the whole mix is harvesting and eating because the vegetables that come out of the garden are delicious. So first thing is location selection. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to choose a flat area because you are putting a box on top of this area. So in order to not have, uh, to, in order to get everything into one place, you, you need the area to be flat. You wanna have, and, oh, and make sure no puddles because if it's a place that, that soaks up water or where water tends to pool, um, it's, it's not going to do well because you might think to yourself, oh, well, this is great. Then I won't have to water my garden, but the roots are going to sit in that water. The water will still continue to drain down. And so you don't want that. So you need to have six hours of sunlight, six hours plus. So if you have more sun, that's better. If you have to make a decision between morning sun and afternoon sun, morning is better. Avoid shady structures, and shady structures would be trees. Obviously, you're not going to want to plant under a tree. Um, I made we we made a little bit mistake of a mistake here at our house when we planted when we situated our beds because we situated them right outside uh, the back of the house. Because I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is going to be very easy. I'm only about you know 10 feet perhaps outside the back of my house, so. There won't be any issue with that. But the problem is, and what we didn't take into consideration, is that our house is a two-story house and it winds up being on a our, the back of our house where our garden is faces north. So in those cooler months, the garden is in full shade all the time because the house is casting a shadow on where the garden is. It's not that big of a deal. In the cooler months, we wind up growing greens anyway. Um, but if I had it to do over again, I would have probably plant, put the garden maybe six, seven feet farther out so as to not get that shade happening over the garden. So the other thing, be close to water. You're going to need to water your garden probably every day. So what that means is that you're not going to want to be lugging buckets. You're going to be, you're going to want to be within hose distance or, I mean, if you want to get super fancy, you could set up uh, a watering system, but it's just as easy to do it with the hose. So the big thing for all of this in the location selection is that convenience is really going to be your key. You want to make sure that it's easy for you to, do, to have a garden. Um, by the way, let me just mention this. If you don't have any space at your home, the county does offer at several parks, there are community garden spaces where you can rent a four foot by eight foot square foot bed. They provide the bed, the soil, they provide the means to water. They do not water for you, but they provide the means to water. And I believe the cost for that is $50 a, a, a summer, a season. So if that's something you're interested in, we'll put that link online for you as well. Okay, so that's all about location. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to build your box. And a box can be as simple as four boards fastened together. It does not have to be four foot by eight foot, but make it in one foot increments. You could have four by six, you could have four by four. Um, the biggest thing is that you want four feet on the mat at the most on the short side. And that's so that you can reach those plants that you're not, you're not having to put your hand down or compact that soil to reach over things to get into that bed to harvest your delicious produce. So if you don't have lumber, you could use concrete blocks, get creative. 
We used pre -made, a pre-made kit that we ordered from Amazon. Uh, it got delivered right to our door, so that was fantastic. And then you'll want to line the bottom with a weed barrier so that um, you don't have weeds coming up from underneath. And what you can do is you can either use cardboard, which eventually will disintegrate under there, or you could use newspaper. Either way, that, that's gonna be your best bet. Okay, and so once you've built your bed, you've got everything ready to go. Now you're going to want to fill it with compost mix. And this is Mel's mix. It is measured by volume. So by volume, you'll have one third of the mix will be peat moss, one third of the mix will be coarse vermiculite, and then one third of the mix will be compost. And you'll wanna use as many different types as possible. Uh, Mel's suggestion is that you use five different types. So you could have mushroom compost, uh, ones that are typically available at your home improvement stores will be mushroom compost, vegetable compost. Uh, there'll be, uh, there's an aquatic compost mix and definitely composted manure. Um, the yellow bag that you see in this picture is black cow. So that is cow manure. Uh, additionally, worm castings, which are, uh, if you do vermicomposting, which is composting with worms, then Worm castings are the result of that and they're super nutritious. Um, one of the, we, we do have a source for worm castings here locally. Uh, so uh, that is um, a company called Earthen Organics and Kristen does, does, does worm composting, which you can purchase locally. Um, highly recommend that. Um, so that's kind of your mix, right? different kinds of compost are really important because what this is going to do is they are going, the, the different kinds are going to combine together um, to make a really dense nutritional mix for your plants. The bonus of this is that you won't have to use fertilizer. The compost itself is what is providing all the nutrients. Now, if for whatever reason, you just can't get your mind around mixing this all up together or buying all these individual components. Um, that's okay. Uh, especially if perhaps you're not going to do a whole bed, but you're gonna do either a smaller space or you wanna do container gardening. And this square foot gardening method is very good for container gardening as well. Then you can use, we would recommend a potting, uh, potting uh, soil called strawberry fields. And that is something uh, that has the right aeration to it already. It's already this mixed up for you. And that's available here locally at, at Lotus um, Farm Supply. And I will give, will provide that link to you so you can see where to get that locally. Um, but again, if you can make this Mills mix on your own, it's the best way to go, especially if you're filling raised beds. Um, raised beds, generally speaking, want to be 12 in, at least eight inches tall. 12 is better if you can, um, and you'll need a good amount. So the picture that's on here, uh, the two white boxes on the far side of the picture are the beds themselves. Um, but beyond that, everything else is what we used uh, in to, to mix up and and make our mix. Okay, so now we're gonna be on to the planning and planting. So for a square foot garden, obviously you're going to wanna to think in squares and not rows. So using a four foot by eight foot example, you've got 32 squares to work with. And so this, this whole, the, the thing that was really a light bulb moment for me is I resisted gardening because the idea of going out and planting a row of just for instance cabbage. So you go out and you plant you plant some cabbage and then you have to at a certain point once the sprouts start coming up then you have to thin your cabbage to a certain distance apart and also you have to keep going out and weeding and how I as, as a non-gardener, how do I know what is a little baby cabbage plant versus what's a weed? No idea. But with the square foot gardening method, you plant in patterns. 
And that present, it prevents you from having to thin out your plants because if you have to thin out your plants to a certain distance, you just plant a certain distance away and then you never have to thin things out. Also, when you weed, if you have things that aren't growing in your pattern, then you know it's a weed and you can just yank it right out when, it, when it's little. And the thing about this is that Kirsten suggested uh, this method of gardening to me because she knows me really well and I really resisted trying to grow food. And, it, and really when I saw this, I was like, this makes perfect sense. And it's worked so incredibly well. And so I was talking about patterns. And so what are the patterns? So if, you, if, you, if your seeds instructions tell you to thin to 12 inches, that means that you can have one plant per square foot. You plant the seed in the middle of that square foot, done. Then you know if it's growing somewhere other in the middle of that square foot, it's a weed, pull it out. And you can pull them when they're really little and the soil is super light. So it's not even like you're out there like struggling to weed. Um, if you thin to six inches, that means four plants per square foot. And so you, pl you plant them in the little pattern here. Um, and then the same thing with, with four inches and three inches, you'd either plant nine or 16. And don't worry about this. One of the resources that you're going to get is a Greenville Growing Guide. Uh, and it will tell you for very common vegetables, it will tell you how many to plant per square foot. So you'll know. Um, and additionally, you're going to get a plan that has this on there. So these are planting examples. And most, most plants will fit into one square, but there are some exceptions. Um, watermelon, watermelons run, so you wanna make sure you have a lot of room for those. Zucchini squash, this illustration that I found from an extension says that you plant one plant per two square feet. It's a lie, believe me and trust me when I tell you to plant one plant per four square feet. It's going to take up all of that room and more. Um, and then like your large plants, your tomatoes, your eggplant, your broccoli, those will be one. Then you've got your mediums, your smalls and your extra smalls. So it's a very simple process. So here's a real life example from the garden the first year. This was arugula, or I'm sorry, radish. And so you can notice that the radish spacing was nine. So you see eight of the nine here popped up. I, one did not sprout for me. Um, and then this was the first year I did markers as well. So I did the variety of plant. In this case, this is a Mazzotto rose radish. I did the date that I planted, which was on February 28th, what my pattern was. So that tells me nine. So in case I don't remember when I go out there, I have an easy reference tool. And then I put the estimated har harvest date on here. So this was a 60 day because these were larger. And so the harvest date was supposed to be on um, 428. But a little bit, a, a note about that. Um, those are net, those are just guidelines. They're never going to be accurate. So I did that the first year and then I gave up after that because it, I just, it was easier to pay um, to, to just see where things were and kind of roll with, with the harvest dates. Um, so this year we used, uh, to mark out our garden, we used bamboo squares. So how do you choose what to grow? Think about what you and your family like to eat, first of all. Don't grow cabbage if you don't like cabbage or broccoli if your kids won't eat broccoli. Next, think of how much you can eat. Again, with the cabbage, can you eat, I mean, would you plant a dozen cabbage all to, to ripen at the same time? Of course, uh, unless your family is super crazy about cabbage or you're going to can, you wouldn't do that. So plant what you like to eat, plant how much you can eat, and then make a list and use the Greenville Growing Guide that you're going to get from the resources page. You'll note the growing season for the fruits and vegetables you wanna grow and the space requirements for each one. And so your list might look something like this. This was a partial list for us for the first summer one tomato plant uh, per square. These are the things that we liked to eat. 
Um, so we could kind of, we figured this out that if we planted just this list, it would have taken up 10 of our 32 squares. So what we're going to give you to help you out is a square foot garden planner that has the, the planting spacing on it. So you can actually write your choices in there. Um, one of the things uh, that, well, we'll just move along. You're gonna get one of these. And so you fill in the puzzle. So you fill in each square and you wanna take final height of plants and that the, the heights will be on the packages usually of the seed packages. So your taller plants are going to be things like your tomatoes. And you're gonna to want to plant those on one side of your garden because you, when you're planting seeds, it's hard to kind of um, envision sometimes that the plant is going to get so big that it shades everything else. So you want to make sure that you've taken that into account. So in our beds, we have we do the tomatoes and the peppers, which tend to be tall, on the back of the beds where we have a structure that we can tie them off. Um, some plants need shade. So if you have something that needs shade, plant it in front of something that's going to grow tall that will provide shade for it. And then again, some plants need cages or trellis support. So factor that in. Like I said, we have um, a trellis situation on the back of our beds. So that's where we put the, the tomatoes. Um, also consider companion planting. We're not going to go into that here, but uh, there are many plants that do better if they're planted together. So just take that into consideration. And so here, this was our first garden plan. Um, you'll know that I've got zucchini in only two squares, and that's when I learned that that was a terrible idea. So we've got some tomatoes, uh, peppers. Uh, everything worked out pretty well uh, this year. I was pretty, I, I was pretty happy with it. So then the next year, I went with multi a multi season planting plan. This was my plan for spring, and then there were there there were spaces for the following se seasons. So. I'm just gonna say right now, this is probably overkill, but it's how my brain was working that year. So I tried to figure out um, for each of the different colors represented a, a one foot square. And so I tried to plan what I was gonna have growing in the spring and then the summer. And it worked for the most part, but again, some of the things didn't ripen as soon as I had, so I had to adjust on the fly. So when you begin, divide your box into squares. This person, this is not my bed, this person has used string and thumbtacks to divide the box into squares so that, it, so that you have a visual notion of where you're planting and what the squares are. You could use anything though. I've used wooden slats, I've used, we've used string, we've used um, little bamboo poles. You can use anything that works for you. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your seeds or your little plants. So we have, um, Greenville County has partnered with the Greenville County Library System to host a seed library at the Berea branch. While the Berea branch is closed, those seeds are available. Uh, we will give you a link to the seed library uh, website and we are mailing seeds to people right now. Uh, those are three packets. If you have a library card, you're a Greenville resident with a library card, you can order free seeds online. We would love for you to try heirloom varieties of seeds uh, for summer plants, uh, tomatoes, peppers, zucchinis, and that's any. those are the things that you're going to plant for the summer season uh, a little bit. Uh, about last frost date. In the upstate, our last, our typical last frost date is April the 15th. So if you are planting after April the 15th, my recommendation would be to check your 10 or 15 day weather forecast if you can. Notice that wh whether or not it is, um, you've got any real cold snaps coming. Um, but generally speaking, you can plant outside in the ground after April 15th. Um, but for some summer plants, it'd be easier to buy little seedlings or start plants indoors. Um, 
if you want to start something before April 15th, you start them indoors and then you can move them outside. And we recommend Country Boys, the Swamp Rabbit Cafe and Grocery, local farmers market plant sales, some local farmers offer plants. So kind of take a look around if that's something that you want to grow. Additionally, you could join a seed of the month club like Grow Journey. They're awesome and you get surprise seeds every month so you just you never know what you're going to get and we'll have those links online as well so this was our very first year of planting uh, you can see that we went to uh, the local um, home improvement store for most of our seeds uh, now we're using seeds from the seed library and the seeds at the seed library i also want to mention are all non-gmo they're mostly organic and there's a lot of heirloom varieties. So um, if you can get those seeds, those are great. Um, but any, plant any seeds that you like. Um, so this is what we planted the first year. Uh, you can see what we planted from seeds and then we have the starts there. Those are peppers and tomatoes and eggplants. Um, side note is I planted, you can see there in the list, we planted Brussels sprouts. That was a horrible mistake. I've never had success with Brussels sprouts, so your moves may vary. So maintenance on these on, on the garden is easy. You water at the base of the plants and you water appropriately. Weeding is very easy. If it's not in your pattern, it's a weed and just pull it right out. And because you've made this Mills mix, it's very light. So it's easy to pull those out when they're little. It, it, it is not gonna be a hard job of weeding. Keep an eye out for pests, remove them if necessary. Um, I don't garden with any sort of pesticides. So if we get squash bugs or tomato hornworms, those get pulled off the plant by hand and dunked in soapy water. Um, and then you kind of take a minute, you wait for everything to grow. Keep in mind, some plants can be harvested kind of from the outer leaves, lettuces, chives, cilantro. Um, side note, fun fact, cilantro is a cool weather plant and not a warm weather plant. Even though it's made with salsas, um, it's actually a cool weather plant. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, but you can see I've got something growing here in pretty much every bed. And uh, we had multiple harvests with the lettuce because we would just go out and collect outer leaves from them. Uh, and so we had lettuce for several weeks. We had nice salads. So, and finally, enjoy the fruits of your not so hard labor. So that is square foot gardening. Once again, for those of you who are joining us on the recorded version, we will not have a method to do questions and answers, but you'll get, um, you will see a, you'll get a link when you, when you've registered to attend this webinar, you will get a follow-up email that will have a link to all of our resource pages. And you can always contact us via that, that page if you have further questions. And I am happy to answer questions that anyone has. So thank you so much. Have a great day. And happy gardening. <laughs>